Computers first came on the scene uh, back in the late 40s. Uh, scientists were thinking of, of grand challenges. What could computers do that were never, was never possible before? And one of the, the first ideas that came out was, a, as a grand challenge, as a holy grail, how could you get a computer to, to play world championship level chess? Initially, everybody thought it's an easy problem. Computer can carry so much faster than a human being, right? It should be a piece of cake for the computer. It's not, it was much harder than that. What the real live chess player does is take in the whole position in one conscious awareness. And then a, a really good chess players have an enormous capacity to remember entire positions on the board and to see possibilities. The, uh, the machine doesn't do that. Computers play uh, basically by calculation. They just say, OK, and say, if, it's, if it's my move, what are my possible moves? If I go there, then you can go there and then I go there, and it just continues on in a string like that, and every position along the way gets, gets evaluated. But the difficulty with chess is that the numbers become astronomical very fast. If you just multiply, I have eight moves, you have eight counter moves. I have eight counter moves to each one of your eight counter moves, and you have eight counter moves to each one of my eight counter moves. It's soon uh, the numbers are as big as the universe. In fact, that number, the number of atoms in the universe, is a trivially tiny number compared to the number of games you can play up to move 40. So the problem with chess has always been, how the hell do you solve the exponential problem? How do you solve the problem of the sheer size of the numbers involved? Now what these guys have, the technique has got a beautiful name. It's called brute force. This has been a classic confrontation this afternoon of man versus machine. Oh. There it is. And Kasparov has soundly defeated the Neutron 9000. Thank you. Thank you. I find it amusing. All machines are just wires, nuts, and bolts. They're stupid by nature. IBM produced something which was completely different. It was a program put into hardware. So they built a certain, a small chip, which could do nothing but play chess, but it could do that extremely well. And this chip, they duplicated, they made many hundreds of copies and put 200 of them into a machine and let them work in parallel. Deep Blue was running 200 million positions per second. the 17 year old, 18 year old, who's just slowly being let out into the world by the Soviet sport authorities. And Gary was just smashing people, very solid senior professional grandmasters who do not lose in 30 moves at all, ever, and certainly not to 17 or 18 year olds who are just coming in and f sacrificing three pieces. And these guys are getting up off the board going, I'm never going to play with him again. <laughs> you know, that was just a horrible experience. And, you know, and they were having these, he was really traumatizing some, some players, but it catalyzed the chess world. Suddenly, you know, he was a huge crowd favorite because of the chess. It was just sensational chess to watch. Karpov was there. Karpov was ideal. Karpov, um, you know, played under the rules. He, he did what it required to be on the top. So that's why, why, why did they need another one by having Karpov? Plus this another one was uh, not Russian, half Jewish, half Armenian. And more important, even more important than the national factor, uh, Kasparov was not uh, a person to be controlled. Moscow, 1984. Karpov versus Kasparov. The Russians have always dominated world chess. The latest world championship battle was between two of them, the holder Anatoly Karpov and his young challenger, Gary Kasparov. 
Gary, what was all the fuss about? Uh, you mean oh, that World film. Championship match troubles? Yes, yes. Yeah, it was an unfor unforgettable day for me because uh, I couldn't tolerate more. Uh, so that's what you were maintaining, that the whole chess establishment was in favor of Karpov at the yes, time. Yes, Because yes. they wanted him to yes, win. Yes, they have close connection for, for a long time, for ten, yeah. 10 years. You said to me upstairs that really uh, there's a greater struggle off the chessboard than there is actually on it. Yes, they use a very strange way, dirty tricks. Dirty tricks? Yes, dirty tricks, yes, under the table. It's... <laughs> It's, it's, it's more convenient because nobody, nobody can, can see. Right. You're, not, you're not saying that Karpov kicks you under the table, right? No, 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 no. Yes, I hope I'm much stronger than him. <laughs> it was suspended at 5-3, I remember, because he yes. was winning 5-0, then you started to come back and he began to lose it. So they suspended it. Yes, he was losing completely. Kasparov was busy losing his temper. What a performance, he shouted. I could even win, but they're just trying to delay. I uh, personally believe that uh, what I was doing was in the best interest, but uh, you know that your, the players are only one part of this situation. Moscow, 1985, a revanche. I was quite lucky that it was a new time already. Gorbachev was in the office, and uh, the political situation has been slowly changing, and. Yeah, in September 85, we started here, a new match, a second match, and that's, that's where I got my title. You're standing on the exact spot, perhaps. Uh, it's, we're talking about probably, you know, uh, you know, one feet, you know, away from the actual location of the chair where I sat on November 9, 1985. It was my day, it was, it, 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 it was time change, you know, the, the country was just about to change and that's why this victory was very symbolic. So I had a lot of supporters in the audience and everybody was quiet because they didn't want to, maybe to, to threaten our luck. So I was waiting for him to resign and he resigned. I, it was, you yeah, know, uh, it was quite primitive, so natural. So he resigned, the game was over, and I won. There was only one camera that shot me, actually, with my hands up. So one, one shot. You know, now I wish I had more time to go around, just to, to wave my hands, but it was one shot, and I walked away, I won. I walked away, and, and I know this my mother, she nearly fainted in the audience. Uh, and there were many people here that, uh, that couldn't believe that it, uh, it's, it has actually happened. I'm afraid it's a little bit dangerous, you know, to come back to your past, trying to carve something for your uh, energy now. It's, it belongs there. It's part of uh, my life, it's part of the glory. It's a great history, I'm proud of it, but it's still history. Human beings are weaklings in everything. They can't run, jump, swim, as well as a dozen animals. So we're weak and weaklings. But there's one area in which we have been supreme for millions of years. That's intelligence. Nothing has challenged us. Now, for the first time in the history of our race, something comes and says, hey, I might be smarter than you are. And it's a machine. I always felt that this match was really going to be uh, one of the more important symbolic events of the 20th century. And if you look at the history of computers, chess playing and beating a chess champion was one of the things that computers were never supposed to do.